I, I think it's uh, it is. Oh, yeah, I, will see. Yeah. I mean, really, I'm, I'm, I'm totally new to this game. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us today on, on the 25th of March. Um, um, it's springtime showing up um, here in Frankfurt. We have sunshine. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm pretty happy that you have found the time to, to come in uh, here for this webinar uh, instead of going for a walk in a nice cappuccino. Um, with me, I have uh, Stefan Sprenger. He's the CEO of Datacator, a young startup from the Frankfurt region. Who uh, And uh, this startup is uh, dedicated to working on data or making data um, as much as available for everyone in your organization. And uh, we thought um, that it would be a, a good idea to have a, a presentation, a webinar about Datacator, but also uh, for um, what, we're, what we uh, have been doing for, for many, many years is using the Apache Solar Search uh, server and also especially with um, Typo3. So um, there's a quite a nice mixture of people here in the audience that people are coming from the Typo3 area. Uh, others are coming from, from our uh, data cater area or from the area uh, of our uh, LinkedIn network. And, and thanks, thanks again, uh, everyone for, for joining today. I hope this is as fruitful as we think it is. And uh, I would give over to Stefan um, to talk, uh, please. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Olivier, for the for the nice introduction. Also, a uh, warm welcome from my side. Um, it's super, uh, super great that so many of you uh, joined our webinar. And yeah, we're, we're looking forward to uh, spending the next hour with you on the topic uh, of, uh, of Dedicator, Apache Solar, uh, and also um, maybe having a look at a use case uh, from the e-commerce field. Um, the goal of us is uh, to start the webinar with a uh, few slides, give you a brief introduction to the Dedicator platform and show you how you can automate your data um, with Dedicator. And um, we also reserved uh, lots of time for a, a live demonstration where we uh, yeah, show how to um, yeah, automate the uh, ingestion of product data into a Apache Solar search engine. And we do that part with Datacator and also um, enhance the product data while, while ingesting them uh, into uh, solar. Um, and um, to, to complete the, the setup, um, we'll serve the product data in Apache Solar uh, uh, with a uh, type of three part uh, website. So um, let's start uh, with the with the brief uh, introduction. So what is Datacator? Um, Datacator is a self-service platform for streaming data pipelines, which makes streaming data pipelines accessible to entire data teams. So whether you are a non-technical domain expert with profound knowledge um, about the data with uh, lots of experience uh, on the business side, or whether you are a, a technical engineer, software developer, um, Dedicator provides one unified um, approach to working with streaming data pipelines. So uh, on the one side, Dedicator allows you as a user to interactively build streaming data pipelines with its no-code pipeline designer. So you don't have uh, to, to be experienced in programming. Um, just have basic understanding of, of working with data, um, but uh, it all also offers uh, powerful ways to extend the no-code UI with uh, custom code-based data transformations. Um, and uh, by that allows data teams to work together to collaborate on data. Um, what we uh, achieve um, is uh, we allow you to prepare your data in real time. So the streaming data pipelines ensure that uh, once your data sources uh, change, um, they, they will automatically detect the changes, uh, process the data changes with the pipelines that you build in Datacator, and then um, publish the process changes to your data sinks. And by that, um, yeah, fully automate your, your um, data. Datacator um, is cloud native. That means all the pipelines that you build with Datacator 
um, are deployed as containers and uh, offer perfect integrations uh, into uh, cloud platforms and the existing services um, for uh, instance for uh, monitoring, logging, uh, et cetera. And of course, our, our big goal is to bring together the data teams to allow the different stakeholders from the business side, from the engineering side, to work together, to collaborate, to unleash their full potential. And uh, to this end, we offer um, projects as a collaborative means to sharing pipelines, sharing data connectors uh, within teams. So Datacator allows you to uh, connect your data source systems with your data sync systems. Um, we offer connectors for database systems such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, um, other commercial ones, um, web applications. We have uh, generic um, connectors for HTTP endpoints and flat files. And you can use Datacator to connect these different systems to different data sync systems. And again, this, these could be um, database systems, data warehouse, web, web applications, um, HTTP endpoints, and so on. And we don't only allow you to connect these systems to just copy the data from, for instance, a MySQL database system to an Apache Solar Index, but also to um, yeah, process the data while we uh, transfer, while we stream them. So you can transform your data, for instance, to um, change the structure of the data. You can filter the data to only process a subset. Um, of course, you can join the data with other data sources um, and also clean the data to get rid of um, errors. And all that, the whole dedicated platform is powered by Apache Kafka um, and is available as a software as a service application uh, that you can use without worrying about operations. Uh, but we also ship Datacator as an on-premise installation that you can deploy on existing um, Kafka uh, installations. Um, I hope this uh, already um, yeah, paints uh, a picture like about what Datacator can offer to you. Um, and uh, in like a very concrete example in uh, like using one use case from the e-commerce field, um, we want uh, to, to have a look at how Datacator performs in action. So um, in preparation for this uh, webinar, we loaded um, data from a product feed into a MySQL database system, and we'll connect the MySQL database um, using Datacator with a Apache Solar um, yeah, search index search engine. We don't only uh, transfer the data and uh, automate uh, like um, the data between MySQL and Apache Solar, but also perform some transformations uh, on the way. So um, first we need to somehow um, prepare the data structure for the schema of the Apache Solar search index. We can achieve that with um, various no code functions uh, offered by, by Datacator. Um, second, um, we loaded um, German and English products into the MySQL database system. So there will be products with a, a German product description and products with a English product description. Um, in this demo, we'll use a Python library using our code-based transformations to automatically detect the language used in the product description and then only filter the products with a uh, English description to keep the search index uh, clean. And third point, we'll make use of a Python library called Spacey, um, a ML library to automatically um, extract keywords from the product description using uh, named entity recognition, and then feed these uh, keywords into the Apache Solar Index. And to complete the demo use case, we'll solve everything uh, using um, a type of three powered um, website search. So I think now it's, it's time to uh, jump into the demo. Thanks, Stefan. Um, it's uh, really good to, to see what you're presenting. Great. <laughs> cool. Um, so 
this is a uh, data cater and in my my second browser tab i have the the type of three installation um which is very basic just an example uh website um with a um like website search which um at the moment does not uh, offer any results so um the search uh, index is empty and um, we set up a, a project in, in Datacator. And I think like you can get a very clear picture uh, in a few seconds what you can do with projects in Datacator. So you can basically um, assign uh, colleagues, team members to your projects, and then um, create and share pipelines, data sources, and data things. And what I did in preparation for this webinar is uh, set up a, a MySQL data source connector for the MySQL database system, uh, holding the data from the product feed, and also set up a data sync connector for a, a SOLA um, search index, uh, which is uh, used by the Type 3 website. And together with you, um, I built a pipeline which connects the MySQL data source with the Solar data sync. So let's head over to pipelines, create a new pipeline and select the data source that we want to consume. Then we do some profiling and load our pipeline designer, which offers you all the tools needed to build a streaming data pipeline. And uh, on this overview page, you can see the basic structure of a pipeline in Datacator. So we have the, the data source holding the raw product data uh, that we want to extract and ingest into Solar. We can define pipeline filters to select only a subset um, of, the, of the data source and can define a sequence of pipeline steps to transform and process the data while streaming the data from the uh, data source to the data sync. And what you can basically do using the pipeline steps is define multiple steps, which are applied in sequential order to the data. And in each step, you can apply one transformation function to each attribute of the data set. Then the data, after applying all pipeline steps, after applying the filters, um, is being published to the, the data sync. Um, let's maybe first have a quick look at how the data, uh, how the product data looks like. Um, so um, in this table, we uh, show a sample set of the uh, data source, in this case, a product data and different rows are, well, different records from the MySQL database system and different columns are the different attributes. Um, so we have attributes like um, the name of the merchant, this um, data source, we have two merchants, um, a unique product ID, a URL to the product, um, a category name, um, a brand name. So for instance, um, Looks like um, uh, we have like dishwashers, I think here, like with AEG, Whirlpool uh, and so on. Um, we have uh, product IDs, um, product names, the descriptions that we'll use for detecting uh, the language. So here you can see um, some, some English descriptions. Um, where we, when we scroll down a bit, you can uh, see uh, German descriptions. And Together with you, um, I will uh, first prepare the structure for uh, indexing with the uh, Apache Solar search uh, index. So we basically need to add a few attributes uh, to this data set to um, yeah, enable the indexing. And we'll also um, perform the, the other two steps. That means detecting the language and filtering only English product descriptions and extracting keywords from the product description. So um, let's head over to the transformation part. And what we first do is um, add a few attributes to the data set. Um, and let's give that a name and uh, use that button here to introduce new attributes to the data set. So um, 
for the solar index, we need around um, four custom attributes. Um, first one um, is called app key. A uh, second one is called type. Third one is called site. And the fourth one is called uh, site hash. Um, I will add another two uh, attributes uh, for the uh, remaining tasks. So first, um, a new attribute for storing the detected language of the product. And second, a new attribute for storing the keywords that we extracted from the product descriptions. So um, let's first fill the attributes needed by the um, Apache Solar Search Index. Oh, there we go. <laughs> And uh, then we can basically use one of the um, no code transformation functions offered by Datacater to fill in static values uh, into these uh, attributes. And uh, the one we're looking for is called replace with value. And this basically uh, fills in a value that we provide here um, into this attribute. And for the app key, we will just use Datacater. And for the type, which basically res resembles uh, the, the type of the data in Sola, um, we'll use the term um, products. Um, the other two attributes are required by the type of three Sola extension and are basically used to um, map records to a certain um, website inside the type of three installation. And um, just need to, to copy this uh, information from uh, my, my other um, window. And again, we basically fill in static values here. So this part is a bit, is a bit boring. Um, but we are, we are getting to, to the uh, interesting uh, part. Um, uh, so, Stefan, I hate yes. to stop you, but I think you need to switch the one attribute with the other. I think you've put the site should be the one that is in the site hash and vice versa, please. Olivier, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. This, is, this was just a test for you. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so I will quickly um, change, whoops, the values here. All right, thanks, Olivier. <laughs> Otherwise, the search index uh, or the, the uh, search page on the type of three installation would have remained empty. Um, so we filled these virtual attributes. And um, one thing that I, I forgot is uh, we also need to, to change the type of our um, unique identifier of the products because uh, the uh, Solar Search Index uses a string for that. And the MySQL database system uses uh, a long or a big int in MySQL as data type. And we can also do uh, typecasting using uh, predefined functions in the indicator. Again, click on this apply transformation button, then select the cast to data type function and choose in this case, string as a new data type. And as you probably uh, have observed, the cool thing about this um, pipeline designer is while you apply transformations to your data, you can you, you get an instant preview uh, on, on the impact on the outcome of your data transformations, uh, which really speeds up the process of building such streaming data pipelines and also allows um, yeah, non-technical users to get a very um, instant uh, preview of like the transformed process data. Okay, I think if we would leave the data like that, we could already ingest the data into the solar index. But we also want to make use uh, of some uh, machine learning of some Python libraries to maybe enhance the product data with further information. And uh, in the first step, I would um, use a Python library I uh, call LangDetect to automatically detect the language of the product descriptions. So we have the descriptions here in this field called descriptions. 
And we basically have English and uh, German product descriptions. And since, since uh, the, the uh, Solar Index is set up for, for English, we don't want to fill in uh, German uh, yeah, text. So um, let's go to our attribute called language and apply a Python uh, based uh, function uh, to this attribute. And what we basically uh, can do here is uh, using this very um, simple but, but efficient uh, function, we can, we can access both the value of the attribute that we are applying the, the Python function to, as well as all the other attributes of the record. So what we do here is we first import um, the language that we want to um, that we want to uh, use for detecting the language used in a text value, and then we basically access the description attribute using this uh, row parameter, pass it to the detect function of langdetect, and this returns then the the language uh, which is uh, yeah kind of predicted. And as you can see, um, it uh, returns uh, the value uh, EN, or short for English, for the English product descriptions, and um, also detects the, the German um, product uh, descriptions, or at least in most cases. And um, this already works quite well. Um, only thing left to do is we'll combine that uh, with a filter to only keep the English um, products. So let's add a, a, a next step here and um, ignore all non-English uh, products. And we can do that with, with a, a no-code uh, function called ignore record. Uh, just need to combine it with a filter that basically um, applies this function to all uh, records which do not hold the value en here. So um, we uh, basically uh, end up with only um, English products. Um, next up are the keywords. And what we want to, to do here is we have this uh, attribute called keywords and we'll use again a, a Python function um, to um, access the, the product descriptions and automatically uh, detect uh, entities or recognize entities and use these entities um, as, as keywords. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, we'll return a string holding keywords. And if we have like multiple keywords detected, we will delimit them by a pipe here. And to this end, we make use of the library Spacey, which provides pre-trained uh, models and very um, yeah, efficient way to make use of or to apply named entity recognition. So here you can um, already see the results, which we'll, we refine um, in another step. That means uh, we'll just apply tokenizer here to these uh, strings to, to um, transform these uh, simple strings say, into lists of strings um, and, and build proper lists here. So there you go. You can see like different entities that we recognized. Um, also, can I have, you can have a look at this section, which shows the most frequent values for this column. So you can see that five products have the value of the keyword uh, ProSens, uh, another four have the value uh, Sans Technology. There are four products with the um, keyword or entity in the description, um, RAM, uh, and, and so on. All right, um, this should be it for the transformation part. Uh, we just need to connect the solar index to the pipeline. Um, we select here the, the uh, solar index um, that uh, was set up in preparation for this webinar. And what we need to do is basically um, perform a mapping of the pipeline attributes to the attributes of the solar uh, schema, which we automatically detect. So you can see this schema has lots of different uh, attributes. 
but let's maybe start with the attributes which are required and which are not allowed to be null. Um, we can yeah, reduce this view to, to only the ones which are required by the schema um, and then basically map um, the, the um, attributes from the pipeline to the attributes from the solar index. Um, next, I will fill the site and site hash attributes. I will also fill the, the title field, which will like show up in the search results as, um, as the title of the search result. I will use the product name to this end and also fill the, the content field of the solar index, which will use as, as text for the search result. And I think in this case, we fill in the description from the products. Um, one thing left is, um, or are the, the keywords? And to this end, we'll use a dynamic field. Uh, that's a feature of Solar to, to index yeah, arbitrary um, attributes and make Solar a bit, bit schemaless. So um, we'll define a um, string field here, um, a dynamic field for strings, which can help hold uh, multiple values and fill it with the keywords, uh, which we extracted from the product description. And I think now we can, um, what's happening here? Um, okay. Now we set up the, the uh, mapping of, of the schema. We can also uh, verify the mapping here. So everything looks good. So in case you miss maybe filling a required field, we would uh, show some error message here, but we can now basically start um, executing the pipeline. And to this end, we head over to deployments and create a new deployment for the pipeline. And that's basically the point where we um, yeah, uh, translate your pipeline definition that you just interactively built into actual code uh, that we can start and execute. So. Um, we basically compile the pipeline to a Kafka Streams application, uh, build a, a Docker image for the Streams application, and then start a container for executing um, this application or, or pipeline. Um, great thing is, if you're already um, a user of a cloud platform, you can use your existing tools uh, for monitoring, logging, et cetera, um, for, for these pipelines. Uh, we may also give it a name. And um, as long as these, these pipelines are running, um, the, the data that's like um, stored in MySQL gets automatically synced to um, Apache Solar. Um, what we start with initially when you um, execute the pipeline for the first time is we take a snapshot from the data source, in this case, MySQL. That means we extract all existing data, process the data with the pipeline, and then insert the data into the data sync. And from that point on, we monitor the data source for changes. That means insertions, updates, deletions, and are able to only detect and extract these changes, process them with a pipeline in real time, and then um, yeah, publish the, the uh, change events to the data sync, in this case, Apache Solar. And by that, um, allow your data syncs um, to always um, provide uh, current data. Stefan. We can also have a look. Stefan, yes. if I may interrupt you for this. Yes. We have one question from uh, Luis. He's asking, where does the solar schema uh, come from that we have shown? Was it part of the I, offline okay. one start setup? Yes, so the, the solar schema is basically defined in Apache Solar. So think of it like a database system where you can also create tables, uh, create a clear structure. Um, and uh, what we basically do in Datacator is uh, when you create a connector for um, Solar, I can also show you in a bit how to create a connector. Um, you just need to pass all the um, information needed to connect to, to Apache Solar, and we automatically extract all the information from your schema. That means which attributes are featured, which data types are used, which fields are required, and so on. So we can work with any uh, Solar installation. Okay, but that means that ba basically, if you have a Solar server running with a schema, schema yeah. um, 
and you can connect to it with our solar uh, connector, the solar mm -hmm. server will give the schema, schema information to data cata, right? Yeah, so yeah. No need to, for configuration or for finding out no, no. The, the schema and so on. Um, no, no. So I, so we don't have any uh, uh, like um how should i say preset configurations uh, built in here for the type of three schema we can work with any uh, solar schema excellent um, i hope uh, Luis, that uh, Luis, that this answers your question um right. so. cool um so what we did here is we just processed the the first snapshot of the data and filled the the solar index mm -hmm. i ju just do a search here um you can see See here the products that we um, processed with our pipeline. These are the product names that we map to the title um, field. These are product descriptions. And these are the keywords that we um, extracted from the product descriptions using named entity recognition. Um, so far, so good. I think Dedicator offers very um, yeah, easy and, and uh, time I'm saving way to, to ingest data into uh, solar. But of course, um, the data uh, in, in your data sources like uh, changes from time to time. And uh, you also want to keep your search index uh, up to date all the time to always um, deliver current and uh, yeah, current data to users. Um, so let's have a look at how Datacator um, handles changes in the sources. So. Um, I will search for Dedicator in the solar, uh, on the website, which performs a search on the solar index. And we don't get any result because there's no entry in solar for Dedicator. There's no entry in MySQL for Dedicator. Um, let's change that and uh, open a connection to um, the VM where the database is running. And I prepared a small SQL script, which inserts two products. First product is called Datacator EN and holds an English description for the Datacator platform. Second product is called Datacator DE and holds a German description for the Datacator uh, platform. And we will insert these two products into MySQL, head over to Typo3, click search. And we can see that only the, uh, the English uh, product made it to the search index and is also available in the search shortly after inserting it into the data source. All right, this should be it for the live demo. We have two slides left, three slides left, and of course, um, I'm always happy to also answer your questions. Yes, so. that, that can be made possible. If anybody in the audience has a question, please then use the raise your hand um, uh, functionality here in the webinar. And I will be able to uh, put you your live question, your voice question uh, for everyone in the audience. Um, so is anybody that wants to start to break the ice with the very first question, um i have one well, is anybody uh, otherwise i will just show the the remaining slides and um maybe then we have some time for for questions uh, oh. so feel free to ask us uh, anything all right um so we basically started building the product um beginning of, of 2020 and uh, although we're uh, like young product, we, we gained our first customers that we are very um, proud of uh, that use a dedicator for working with streaming data pipelines, for accelerating the time to market in data projects, allowing uh, downstream applications such as Apache Solar to always um, yeah, uh, hold or, or deliver current data to of course allow the domain experts to participate in data preparation, make use of the exper expertise, knowledge of the domain experts, and also to have like a, a central platform for data pipelines, which improves observability and also governance. And we're looking um, for, for people to join us on our journey 
um, of uh, yeah, making uh, streaming data pipelines more accessible of automating uh, data in a better way. So if you're an engineer, you may use Datacator to save lots of time by using you know, code functions for automating all your repetitive tasks. And whenever you're stuck within your code functionality, um, you, you can still build uh, very efficient data transformations uh, in Python and even share these Python-based functions with your colleagues uh, to, to, show them, uh, to, to uh, show them the implementation of their business rules and allow non-technical um, project members to validate the correctness. May benefit from dedicators health monitoring of executed pipelines of data sources, data sinks. So for instance, when Apache Solar becomes avail unavailable, we'll shoot an email uh, at you such that you're aware of that um, downtime. If you're a manager, um, we want to welcome you to the world of data and uh, enable you to participate in data preparation because we believe that there's lots of knowledge and, and expertise um, like uh, uh, sitting uh, in the business units, which is currently not really uh, made, use, made use of. And we want to change that and allow you to participate and implement business rules and requirements without coding. And um, of course, also as a company, we would be happy to, um, to work together with other companies and um, welcome agencies, consultancies as partners, allow them to provide more value to their customers in less time, offer integration services uh, around data pipelines, uh, and also uh, gain more um, collaborative, efficient means to sharing data pipelines um, with their customers. And I think we'll end this, um, this uh, like, slide deck with contact information on how to reach out. Um, we're always happy to um, have like technical dis discussions with you, um, answer any questions, and hopefully there'll be a few um, now. Um, so feel free to reach out to us uh, at any time. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks, Stefan. I think that was really quite a a, uh, a, a fast-paced presentation, always up to the point. Um, I think, um, um, yeah, I, I, I'm also eagerly waiting for the questions um, uh, from, from people here in the audience. Um, um, so I wonder if there's anything we can do for you. Thanks a lot, everyone, for, for, for sending us the kudos and also for the great demo remark here on the, on the chat. Um, so we're wondering, is this anything that uh, is still unclear to you or um, would you like to, to discuss this in maybe in a, in, in a personal call? Um, we, are, we are there for, for you. Um, me as um, TKD uh, CEO, uh, who's a partner of Datacata um, and also uh, Stefan, who's um, the CEO of uh, Datacata. Um, um, in nearby Frankfurt, a very nice city and small city. Um, so, um, so we've heard Datacata is based on Apache Kafka. This is the de facto standard for um, streaming data pipelines. That means those streaming data pipelines are near to real time. That means you profit from um, fast page uh, updates uh, from your data source to your data sink. Um, and mm -hmm. that means that while processing the data, you're not only bringing data from A to B, you're able to, to transform the data, to enrich the data so it has additional value. Um, I think that the product also um, offers a, um, a way to merge data with other data sources. I think we have a join feature that we re yeah. really didn't speak about. I think that's something that, that comes up with when you're talking to data uh, uh, database um, ad administrators. That's something that they want to do. Um, there's other use cases than the use case that we have shown to you with you know, MySQL database and a Apache Solar um, uh, server. We have a, um, a massive amount of um, um, of, of uh, source and um, sinks that we can um, uh, connect to data cater, such as um, all kind of database database services. So you can transform 
and go from one database to the other, especially if you like having some use case scenarios where you're migrating data from one platform to the other. Um, that's something. Oh, okay. We have two questions here in Britain. Um, nice. So, so, and uh, it's again, Luis, uh, who is asking, can you give us more details on how the Python functions um, are taken into the Kafka Screams application? Stefan. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Like how, how we technically evaluate Python functions, I guess. Yes. Oh, now the, um, now the questions are really coming in. So it's just, just. Yeah, perfect. So let's uh, take, take one after the other. Yeah. So uh, Python functions. Uh, yeah, well, so um, each uh, like Kafka Streams application is uh, deployed as an isolated container. Um, and inside this container, we also have like a, a UDF runner, uh, which basically is there for evaluating uh, Python uh, UDFs. And um, we initially started with uh, Jython as a way to um, uh, execute Python code on the JVM. But uh, yeah, quickly learned that there are some performance limitations that we will be stuck to Python 2. Point seven, and that we also limit uh, uh, like uh, ourselves with regards to to making use of Python libraries. And nowadays, uh, we uh, implement the Studio F runner like in pure Python and uh, communicate uh, over HTTP between uh, the streams application and Python. All right. Thanks. I think this question was answered. Uh, another question um, coming from Luis. To turn mm -hmm. a DB like MySQL into a stream, are you managing mm -hmm. um, this for the user? Something you like using something like Debezium? Yeah, yeah. So, so indeed, yeah, you just saw the Debezium connector from uh, the open source connector from the okay, for, community. For, for all the others who do not know what Debezium is, what is it? Uh, sure, it's uh, basically uh, an open source project which um, offers, um, yeah, uh, libraries uh, for extracting change information from various database systems such as MySQL, um, such that you can uh, extract information or events such as insertions, updates, and deletes. Um, easily from a database system without um, introducing um, yeah any changes to the database system. All right, All right. Um, a very very yeah. strong uh, framework to build upon. Yeah. So and also if you're looking into customizing a data cater for your use case, um, I think that's also the place to go and to see um, what's going mm -hmm. on. But don't hesitate to ask Stefan uh, in case that you have like special requirements uh, for a, a connector. I have one question yeah. from Thomas, um, yeah. Thomas Schneider. He's saying, very nice user interface uh, for building the pipelines. What technology or framework did you use? And so this second part of his question is also a question that Marcus has had. And we will have this question once you have answers mm -hmm. the very first question here. <laughs> OK. OK. Um, yeah, so on, on the front end, we use uh, React.js, um, which allows us to, to build very interactive and uh, user-friendly um, user interface. And uh, in the back end, uh, we use uh, a, a Scala application, which uh, basically is a yeah, regular web application. Um, you're doing kind of the communication and, and orchestration work. Okay. And Everything that we're doing is state of the art container based. So there's yeah, yeah so uh, everything is container based. For, so for, to run in a Docker mm -hmm. or in a, a Kubernetes cluster um, mm -hmm. on site yeah. um, and uh, on the on the um, usual suspects of the cloud services. Um, yeah, so the second question that was also part from what Thomas was asking and also Marcus is asking, can you give us some details on the pricing model? So what are the price, what is the price range? Um, what are the commitments mm -hmm. you need to do? Um, what is possible sure. or? Yeah, sure. So um, we need to um, distinguish between the um, dedicated cloud variant, which is like a software as a service um, application there. You pay per pipeline per month and uh, starts uh, at uh, six euros uh, when you do annual billing per pipeline per month. 
and uh, the dedicated on-premise uh, installation, um, he, there you'll pay per pipeline and, and users that get access to the platform and starts at a uh, low four-digit um, uh, fee per month. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, I think that answers the question. I've seen that in the, it's possible to go for a test trial um, for seven days test trial. Just go to datacater.io. Um, there's a form where you can enter your email address or you can contact uh, directly Stefan through his contact yeah. details that you see here. And um, he will manage that to give you a, a, a free trial and answer, answer your questions. Maybe if you have like a specific use case, if you have any yeah. other questions, um, please um, don't uh, hesitate to, to come back to us. Um, so I would leave it up to this right now. I thank Stefan for coming and uh, uh, speaking about data cater, also especially in the context of Typo3 and Apache Solar. Oh, I also, also love to see that um, there's great um, of, um, uh, Python libraries around, especially the Spacey IO library is, is, seems to be very promising um, uh, and offering really short-term uh, uh, possibilities to, to, to use it. And especially also that we have this in the platform um, uh, um, as, as possible. Um, this is pretty, pretty nice. Um, thanks for your time, Stefan. Thanks for the preparation. Thanks for the use case. And uh, to you all who have been here um, in this call, I, I really thank you for your time and for your, for your excellent questions that we have seen here today. Um, so um, with that said, um, I would stop the recording and I would um, stop also the webinar. Um, thanks a lot. Um, bye bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Um...